To date, 15 drivers from Canada have graced motorsport's top echelon, but one name stands head and shoulders above them all. Villeneuve. There were two brothers at first, Jacques-Joseph and Gilles Villeneuve. Jacques-Joseph drove in Formula One for Arrows and Ram Racing, while Gilles spent his short career with the mighty McLaren and Ferrari and is considered by many to be the greatest pure racer of his time. However, it is Jacques Villeneuve, son of Gilles, who is the most successful of all. Young Jacques was born in the French-speaking province of Quebec in 1971. Seven years later, the family moved from Montreal to Monaco as Father Gilles' racing career was blossoming. But in 1982, tragedy struck at the Belgian Grand Prix when a horrific accident in qualifying caused Villeneuve Sr. fatal injuries. He was 32 years of age. Jacques was just 11. Inevitably, young Jacques was a daredevil, and like many future stars of Formula One, impressed while karting as a teenager. Aged 17, he began racing properly, honing his skills in Italy and Japan before returning to North America and rapidly rising up the ranks. Winning Rookie of the Year in 1994 and the kart championship title in 1995, along with the prestigious Indy 500. The young Canadian's success had caught the eye of many top teams, but it was Frank Williams who convinced him to follow his father into Formula One. Signing a two-year contract with an option for a third, the F1 rookie would make his debut in the Renault-powered FW18, 1996's hottest car, alongside Britain Damon Hill. His impact was immediate. For his first race in Melbourne, he qualified on pole. Only the third rookie in F1 history to do so. And personally, I, you know, I have confidence in myself. That's the only reason I'm racing. So, uh, in my head, I believe that I can win. I'd love to have had pole position, obviously, but I mean, Jack has done a terrific job, and it was exciting. He would have almost certainly claimed his maiden win first time out. And Fielder fights, 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 and retakes the lead. Fantastic! Absolutely incredible! Were it not for his running wide late on, causing damage leading to an oil leak. Forced to slow down on advice from his engineers, he let his teammate through to take the win and cruised home comfortably behind for a Williams 1-2. Well, for sure it's disappointing uh, to lead most of the race and then having to slow down, but uh, the whole race itself was fun. It was a great battle with Damon. Third in Brazil and second again in Argentina, Villeneuve broke his duck in the fourth race of the season at Germany's Nürburgring. Qualifying P2 alongside pole sitter and championship leader Hill, the Canadian got the better start and didn't look back, leading every lap to the chequered flag. This is one race, it, it feels great, but uh, you know, as of tomorrow it, it will be far away because we'll have to think about the next race, but for sure it's, it's a great feeling. After the start of the season we had, it's, it's great to get one in. Three more victories for Hill had dampened Villeneuve's title challenge somewhat, but at Silverstone, the Canadians stole the Britain's thunder. Good start by Villeneuve. In fact, he edges ahead. Damon Hill is down in the fifth position. He's getting his revenge over Damon Hill. Jacques Villeneuve crosses the line to win the British Grand Prix. I'm very happy, and after the first win, uh, we had a few good results, but uh, we're most of the time second behind uh, Damon. So, uh, you know, we really wanted to, to put one on him. His victory was followed by two further wins in Hungary and Portugal, where a jaw-dropping pass on Michael Schumacher at Estoril's final corner defied belief. 
Jack Villeneuve is taking Michael Schumacher. Villeneuve cuts ahead of the Ferrari. That overtaking manoeuvre by Jacques Villeneuve is one of the most outstanding I have ever seen. But they don't come tougher than Villeneuve. Frank Williams will have been glowing at that manoeuvre down in the Williams garage. Villeneuve sat just nine points behind Hill in the Drivers' Championship as they arrived at the season finale in Japan and duly qualified on pole. With 10 points available for the win, Villeneuve had a slim but definite chance of taking an unprecedented rookie world title at Suzuka. Hill needed sixth or better to take the crown. And a brilliant start by Damon Hill and Villeneuve has been passed by Jean Alesi and by one of the McLarens. So a terrible start for Jacques Villeneuve. And things went from bad to worse for the Canadian. Losing a wheel on lap 36, he found himself buried in the gravel, his dream shattered. But finishing second in his rookie season was still a magnificent achievement, and Villeneuve's outstanding performance helped Williams to their eighth Constructors' Championship win, finishing over 100 points clear of nearest rivals Ferrari. Despite winning the championship, 1997 saw Hill move to Arrows, and Villeneuve was joined by former Sauber driver Heinz Harald Frentzen. The new FW19 proved as successful as its predecessor, and once again the Canadian had a car that could challenge for trophies and titles. But this time, they faced stiff competition from the resurgent Ferrari. qualified on pole in Australia once more, with Frentzen alongside him. But a Turn 1 tangle left him out of the race as soon as it had begun. But he bounced back like a champion, winning in both Brazil and Argentina, and he had seven wins in total before the F1 Circus headed to the penultimate race in Japan. With Villeneuve holding a nine-point leave over Michael Schumacher, gunning for his third world title. Villeneuve secured his ninth pole of the season, but received a penalty for not slowing sufficiently under yellow flags during practice, and would eventually be disqualified from a fifth-placed finish on the road, while Schumacher took full advantage to win and set up an epic title decider in Spain. The 1997 World Championship would be decided at the European Grand Prix at Jerez, with the title rivals separated by just a single point. Incredibly, they set exactly the same time in qualifying, as did Frentzen in the other Williams. But having set his time first, Pole went to the Canadian. Now, he just needed a good start. This is the second uh, race in succession where Michael Schumacher's had a face full of Williams. Villeneuve is all over him, look, he's going he's through. through! Oh yes! Oh. Oh. I don't think... Out goes Michael Schumacher! That didn't work, that didn't work, Michael. You hit the wrong part of him, my friend. Michael Schumacher out! And if Villeneuve can just keep going in the points, he's won the World Championship of 1997 because out of the race goes Michael Schumacher and Jack Villeneuve second settles for third place Holding him aloft, the champion, the new champion. Clearly, Villeneuve was happy just for the third place. But of course, Michael Schumacher failing to win his third title. There's been many races where uh, we didn't get the job done. Uh, I made a few mistakes, the team made a few mistakes, and then somehow uh, things didn't go right when it, they should have gone right. So uh, to win it here after this qualification of uh, Suzuka um, feels, uh, feels great. Fifteen years after the tragic death of Gilles Villeneuve, his son Jacques became Canada's first and, to date, only 
Formula One world champion. But 1997 would prove to be the peak of Villeneuve's powers in Formula One. With Renault withdrawing from the sport, Williams' car for the following season was less competitive. In a season dominated by McLaren and Ferrari, Villeneuve drove like a champion, but managed just two podiums in Germany and Hungary, and finishing fifth in the driver's standings. Rejecting a new contract with Williams, he signed with the brand new and highly ambitious British American racing team, which was run by his manager, Craig Pollock. Although quick in qualifying and with a decent race pace, the car suffered from chronic unreliability, and Villeneuve failed to finish 12 of the 16 Grand Prix and scored no points at all. With the new millennium came a new engine partner in Honda, and a vast improvement in both the team and Villeneuve's fortunes. He was fourth at the season opener in Australia, and repeated that feat in France, Austria and the USA. He finished seventh in the championship, and despite some discussions with other teams, he felt BAR were heading in the right direction, and signed a new three-year deal. 2001 had Villeneuve back on the podium in Spain and Germany, but they couldn't outpace their rival's development, and he finished seventh again. 2002 saw BAR underperform once more, scoring points in only Great Britain and the United States while 2003 saw him claim just two top six finishes in what would be his final season with the team. After announcing a year's sabbatical, Villeneuve was back sooner than expected, replacing Jarno Trulli at Renault for the final three races of 2004 as the team battled for P2 in the Constructors' Championship. But his efforts were to no avail, and they slipped to third behind the now resurgent BAR squad. But Villeneuve had already signed a deal to race for Sauber in 2005 alongside an up-and-coming Felipe Massa. Villeneuve was fourth at Imola, after the two BARs were disqualified over weight infringements. But over the season, Massa eclipsed him, and he slumped to 14th overall his lowest standing in his F1 career to date. 2006 showed promise, with Villeneuve regularly back in the top 10, until a fateful weekend at Hockenheim. A collision at the start was followed by a huge crash mid-race. Jacques Villeneuve, who's had a troubled weekend and a troubled racer, lost his nose cone on the opening lap. Looks like he's gone off quite big time. Little did he know at the time that it would be his last appearance in Formula One. Villeneuve told the team he wasn't ready to race and was replaced for the subsequent Hungarian Grand Prix by the highly rated Robert Kubica, but it was soon announced that he would not be returning. It was a sad way for his career in Formula One to end, but Villeneuve wasn't done racing, competing in NASCAR, Le Mans, touring cars and rallycross as he tested his versatility. But he was never to reach the heights he'd scaled in Formula One. However, for a driver who could easily have lived in the shadow of his illustrious father, Jacques had reached the very pinnacle of motorsport much sooner than anyone could have imagined. Jacques Villeneuve raced with some of the sport's greatest drivers and beat them. He remains one of a small brotherhood of racers who can claim to have been the very best in the world, and will forever be adored by fans as one of the most entertaining drivers in the history of Formula One.